faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven to do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. everyone. Welcome. Thank you for all tuning in. Um, this is Peculiar People. You are listening to WUCC 99.9 FM. I am your host, Cassie Johnson, and with me, as always, your co-host, Seth Wade. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, like I said, you're listening to WUCC 99.9 FM, Williston, New Ellington, Aiken, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting it, I'm gonna get it one of these days, um, so thankful that you guys are listening on the radio, or on Facebook, or on YouTube, or wherever you're listening, we appreciate 
that you support us and that you support the kingdom. So keep doing what you're doing because you're awesome. Anyway, thank you. I just needed a little pep talk for the peeps. Um, so if you don't know about us, you can connect with us. We have Facebook and Instagram because we're young and cool and hip and stuff. It's at peculiarpeople.cast. So that's C-A-S-T. Um, you can listen on the radio. It's WCC 99.9 FM. Um, the other day somebody asked me if people still had AM and FM radios because, you know, you have like XM and all that fun stuff. And I was like, mm hmm they do. Yup, we're on one of them, so check it out. It's pretty, it's really cool when you hear yourself on the radio. You feel like you've arrived. Well, at least I do. <laughs> I mean, I haven't arrived, obviously. But you feel like it for like 0.5 seconds, and then you're like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, so if you have something that you want us to talk about or you just want to chat with me, I love a good email. Uh, our email is peculiarpeople999 at gmail.com. So email me. Reach out. You can DM us on Instagram. I don't think you can PM us on Facebook because I don't know how to activate that. I'm figuring it out. Yeah, so that's that. The disclaimer, the views and the opinions expressed by anyone on Peculiar People are not necessarily the views and the opinions shared by the people that own staff and sponsor the radio station. So, yeah, you know what to do with that. Hold it dear to your heart. <laughs> All right, Seth, how was your week? Um, it was uneventful as always i didn't, didn't really do anything other than school i love that um but yeah i slept a lot and i got some really good sleep this week proud that's of that, good. Happy I'm that. glad you got some good sleep um yeah. that's fun my week was yep <laughs> that good huh yeah it was just so good speechless um but i did just want to praise god because he saw me through another yeah, week year. and another year and my birthday's coming up and I'm getting old. Seth's birthday's coming up and I think you should all wish Seth a happy birthday from now until the day that he was born because he just loves birthdays so much. So I think you should, hmm? I think you should tell him happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yep. God is good Amen. all the time and all, all the time. time. God is good. God is good. So I want to give a few shout outs. Hi, Miss Catherine. Hey, Liberty. Hey, Zach. We love you too. Um, thank y'all for listening. Share this if the Lord leads you to, but only if the Lord leads you to. Don't listen to me. Just listen to the Lord. <laughs> um, Seth, you want to pray for us and then we'll get crack a lacking. Certainly. Thank you, Father, for yet again another week to come before you um, and to come to this radio station and just, and just talk about you and enjoy your company, enjoy each other's company. Pray that the words that come out out, out come out of our mouths would be the, your words, Father, um, and that we would be a blessing and that you would be a blessing because you always are a blessing uh, to the listeners. Pray all this in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you, thank you, friend. So, what are we talking about tonight? Today is it nighttime? Is nighttime? What are we talking about tonight? We are talking about sticking to the plan. Okay, <laughs> which is um. I I have mixed emotions about plans. Seth and I were talking about that. And the Lord has just kept saying that word to me for multiple different reasons uh, in several different contexts. And um, so we're going to talk about God's plan and sometimes what that feels like, but all the time what it looks like and what you do when you're in the middle of it. Because we're all in the middle of it. We're all in the middle of life, even if you're at the end. Like, this is the middle. It, does that make sense? Am I expressing that clearly? I think so, yeah. Okay. You know. It made sense to me. Okay, <laughs> as long as it makes sense to somebody. Because um, it didn't fully make sense to me, but hopefully when we start looking at the Bible, it will come together pretty clear. And if not... <laughs> Well, you have to pray about it because I don't know what else to do. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to give you a little histories, mysteries about how this popped into my head. And then we're going to start reading. Cool? Coolio. Thank you. You're trying to catch up with my crack-a-lackin', ain't you? 
can't do it. I'm just too funny. That's not it. Too. (laughs) Anyway. So I was, the Lord has had me read Acts. And for those of you that don't know, I think Acts is probably my favorite, no, my least favorite chapter in the Bible. I don't know why. It just is. And uh, Seth and I are in a Bible study with some incredible people. And we've been reading Acts. And I was like, God, why, why would you want, why would you want us to read Acts? And I thought it was for everybody else. No, no, no. It was for me because when we like took a pause with the Bible study, God had me read Acts by myself. Sorry, there's a bug. Okay, that's fine. And um, this is why, because he was trying to make this point because uh, since October, I felt very stuck. And I don't know if anyone else feels like that. And I don't know specifically what happened in October. I could tell you some things that did happen, but I don't know if they're related. Oh, I just felt stuck. And someone gave me a wonderful prophetic word that says I'm not going to be stuck anymore. And they also said that this is going to be the best year of my Mm -hmm. life. And we're in March and I'm like, "Mm." Mm -hmm. not that I don't believe God, (laughs) but it just doesn't, I don't see, I don't see the plan. So we're going to talk about sticking to the plan, even when you don't see it. And so just keep following me and maybe it'll be one of those little sermonettes where you get it at the end or in the middle, as long as you get it. Okay. Um, anything to add before we read? You got it covered. Okay. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. I had Every time I adjust my mic, it does that. It's great. It's my favorite. So we're going to be reading about Paul. Everybody knows about Paul, I assume. Uh, tell us a little bit about Paul, Seth. Who's Paul? I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Paul was an apostle. He was originally a Pharisee that was persecuting Christians. Um, but on the road to Damascus, he had his come to Jesus moment, and mm-hmm. he literally saw Jesus face to face. And so he was blinded, and then he became one of the greatest apostles to ever live. Um, mm-hmm. And he wrote like half the new testament amen wow that was so short and sweet that was good though um what do you mean by persecute christians he either had them thrown into jail Mm -hmm. killed uh, taken out of their homes some form of suffering torture something for their belief so he was meanie weenie he was mean yes he was mean (laughs) thank you and so um that's super important. It's important, you know, the background, because we're going to jump in kind of towards the end of Acts. We're going to pick up at Acts 26. And so it's imperative that you know about Paul. So thank you for catching us up. I hope we're all on the same page now. Paul was terrible. Then Jesus grabbed him, and now he's on fire for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay. There we go. There we go. Praise God. Okay. So Acts 23, 11. I'm going to read it. And explain it, and then we'll read some more. But the following night, the Lord, the, the Lord, excuse me, let me start over. But the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, "Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome." And um, a little backstory: Paul's in jail, and you know. When Paul gave his life to the Lord, it got really hard for him really fast because of who he was and what he did. The people that he used to work with persecuting other Christians really just went hard on persecuting him. Mm -hmm. And it was just, if you read any of Paul's writing, you will see that it was a very hard road. But nonetheless, God was with him. Nonetheless, he had incredible favor with the Lord. And that is super important to remember. So in this moment, he's in prison. And um, I'm sure he was a little distraught because the Lord appeared to him and said, be happy, (laughs) be of good cheer, because I have a plan. And the plan is for you to share the gospel in all of Rome. And so if you keep on going, the Jews have another plan to kill Paul and the Lord has favor on him and you just keep on going. Um, Paul is on trial. He's been locked in prison and he was um, held without cause and he was a Roman citizen. So there's a lot of stuff going on that shouldn't have been going on. 
and a lot of people holding him so that the, in prison so that they could g- gain power, so that they can gain prestige, and just a lot of trifling stuff. But all the while, Paul is grounded in what the Lord has told him. And then I want to skip ahead to something in Acts twenty six thirty two. So he is going before King Agrippa. Because he has told Felix, or Felix, Festus. Festus, thank you, thank you. Festus, he has told Festus, which is, sorry, that scared me. My Bible fell, sorry guys. Okay, Festus was the man that was holding him in prison um, because of the Jews were spouting these accusations at him. Mm-hmm. And so he told, Paul told Festus, hey, I want to go to Caesar. So he appealed to the emperor. The emperor of Rome. So at the time, the head honcho of basically the whole world in the natural realm, because mm-hmm. he was the emperor of the greatest empire. Yeah, that's what the there word you is. Go. Empire. Wow. Um, and so Paul knew that if Festus handed him over to the Jews who were making these accusations, that they would have him wrongfully killed. But more than that, he knew what God had told him. And so he decided he'll stay in prison as long as it takes, but he's appealing to Caesar. So he's basically saying, get me to Rome at any cost. So we see Paul sticking to the plan, even though it's uncomfortable. And King Agrippa is who he talks to before he talks to Caesar. And this is what King Agrippa says. All right, 26, 32. Then Agrippa said to Festus, this man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So what had just happened was King Agrippa heard Paul's case and he he deemed Paul innocent. He said, these men are coming at you with false accusations. They have no proof. If you had not appealed to Caesar, you would be a free man. And he didn't say that to Paul, but I'm sure Paul knew that. Mm-hmm. So... When I read that a couple of days ago, I, it just like hit me so hard because Paul could have taken the easy way out and completely ignored what God had said, and he could have done what would have been best for him, and he could be free, free to do whatever, and maybe free to preach the gospel in Jerusalem, but he knew what Jesus had said. He knew that Jesus said, Paul, you're going to share me with all of Rome. Mm -hmm. And so he narrowed in on that promise and he found the plan in that and he stuck to it even when there was a way out. Like he, he didn't have to appeal to Caesar, but he did because of what God said. And then we're going to fast forward a little bit into, um, chapter 27 verse 24. And we're going to see the Lord appear to Paul again. So 23, for there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sell with you. So at this time, he's on his way to Rome in a boat and there's a storm because they didn't listen to Paul. Paul said, don't go this way, go this way. And they said, bump you, who are you, blah, blah, blah. They went the wrong way. But because of the favor Paul had due to his obedience, that obedience we talked about two weeks ago, because of his obedience to the promise and the plan that God had given him, Paul had favor in everyone in the ship got a little piece of that favor because none of them were killed. And then when you read to the end, first or chapter 28, you see Paul spends two years sharing the gospel in Rome. So I know we just breezed through that, but we've got some other examples. Paul got this promise like in the middle of Acts or towards the end, the latter part. The middle of the latter part. The last, the, the last 20, 23. And he took that to heart. And it was hard. And it was challenging. And he spent 
countless years in prison, and he was on trial forever. And he could have taken the easy way out, but he stuck to the plan. And in the middle of his trial, in the middle of the valley, in the middle of suffering, he chose what God had for him, Mm -hmm. even though there was an easier way. And when I read that and when the Lord seeped that in my soul, like my spirit just leapt for joy because there have been so many times where I could have chosen the easier way and I didn't. And it was so encouraging to know that my obedience brings upon favor, favor that's going to get me through this because in the span of these five chapters, Paul gets bit by a snake, a viper, they're poisonous and everyone expected him to fall over dead or at least have some swelling in his hand and he didn't because the favor of God protected him from the poison but it didn't mean he didn't get bit and like Paul wasn't killed in these chapters not for lack of trying they conned up a plan two times in between 23 to 28 to get Paul murdered And it didn't happen. Why did it not happen? Because God had this plan for him. Mm -hmm. And Paul stuck to the plan. And then we see, we see how happy that made him and how much joy that brought him, even in the middle of the suffering. Yeah. And there's, and you talked about he didn't choose what was easy. And that's, I think this is for me, especially even for probably most young people, this is a, um, a hard thing to even comprehend because mm-hmm. I've always chosen easy road because it's always been the easiest and most of my road has been easy because whenever I mean it's just it hasn't been hard I haven't been hit with too many <clears throat> excuse me too many hardships and all these different things um and even if one did come there was always a way to skirt around it so mm-hmm. I didn't have to deal with too much of it um but I, I think just at taking that lesson from Paul and being um and recognizing that the path that you're chosen, that you're being called to take is not always easy. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and recognizing that he is, that one, God will walk with you that whole way, but yeah. that the, um, that there, there's a sense of easy is not always better because how many things did I miss out on the easy road? How many, what would Paul have missed out on the easy road? Who would not have been touched? The mm-hmm. whole island of Malta would not have been touched because yes. Paul, if he would just had not gone to uh, Rome. Um, and so I think we see that in all our lives, how there are, there were places where we've taken the easy road. We've taken, um, the high road we've taken, whatever it was, was either, whether it was disobedient or not, there, there was, a uh, a choice that we made and we, and we made possibly the wrong choice and we um and in the immediate we weren't deeply affected by that mm-hmm. we weren't condemned to hell or anything but um it has later consequences because now i there's like things with studying there's things things with um school that i i missed out on because i didn't um I didn't take take the hard road, and, mm-hmm. and so I'm having to pay back some of those things. But I mean, it's just a it's a learning curve. Yeah, and it, we definitely all experience that. Everything is a decision. Even deciding not to decide, that's a decision. And we see Paul so beautifully making the correct decision because he knew God was with him, and the Lord appeared to him. But guys, God is still with us too. Mm-hmm. Like He said, He would never leave us or forsake us. And he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. And that was paraphrasing. And I really want to read it. So I'm going to flip to it and read it. That's not it. <laughs> Here it is. I put a little sticky notes, but it didn't help me turn no faster. So Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Um, In the King James Version, it says an expected end. Um, In the NIV, it says, for I know the plans I have for you to give you a future and a hope. And when I tell you the devil had that so twisted in my mind when I was growing up, because Jeremiah is the book that the Lord first started using to speak to me and so of course the devil's going to corrupt it and I couldn't see that he was corrupting it I thought I was using logic you know (laughs) it's another story but 
I used to think, because in the King James it says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you. And in the NIV it says, for I know the plans I have for you. And everyone uses it to, you know, people make it a cliche because they're like, oh, God knows what he's doing. He has a plan for you. And I had such a hard time receiving that because I was stuck in the middle and I couldn't see that he had a plan for me. And I couldn't see how any of this was going to work together for anybody's good. And the devil made me think that God didn't know the plans mm-hmm. he had for me. He made me think that he knew the thoughts he thought he thunk t- thought towards me. The thoughts you, I don't know how do you verb that tense, but anyway, I had it twisted basically in my mind that God didn't have a future and a hope for me. He had an expected end and the, the devil just so got in the linguistics. And so I couldn't stick to the plan mm-hmm. because I did not believe God had one for me. And I couldn't see that he loves me so much that he doesn't just have an expected end for me. He has a future and a hope for me. And that future and that hope mm-hmm. is in Jesus. And when you walk around hopeless, you're not going to make the difficult decisions. You're not going to stick to the plan. You're not going to do what Paul did and say, I surrender and I'll be obedient unto death. You're not going to take that leap of faith and appeal to Caesar if you don't know God has a plan for you. And you're not going to stand on the promises if you don't think the promises are going to weave together to make a beautiful plan so you got to get that in your head first that he knows the plans that he has for you and they're plans of hope and a future but you got to stick to the plan Mm -hmm. everyone in paul's life that we see in the book of acts so agrippa whatever what's his name Festus. I almost said Felix. Fetus or Felix. There's Felix and there Festus. was a Felix. Felix too. is the first one. Okay, Festus right. is the second. All right. Right. I got it. Well, all those people expected Paul to just roll over and give up. They, they were like, if only he hadn't appealed to Caesar, he'd have been free. And the world will tell you that you did the wrong thing all the way until the end. But when you hear from God, when you have a promise, when you know the plan, you better stick to it because mm-hmm. obedience is better than any sacrifice. And the promises of God bring about the blessings of God. Yeah. And obedience brings about favor. We've talked about promises a lot on this show. Um, in episode 10 and episode 11, I'll drop some shameless plugs. Go back and watch them. They were really, really good. And then 12, we talked about standing on the promises. Okay, so this is similar But it's going a little bit deeper. This is walking out the promises of God. Because if you just stand on them, you ain't going to go nowhere. You're just going to be standing there. You're going to be stuck in the middle, which is probably what's wrong with me. And there's, uh, on the way here, I was worshiping and I was just thinking. um, And all of a sudden, and this thought never comes except in in times of doubt. And I was not in a time of doubt, but Mm -hmm. it hit me. um, what, What if I, like what if I stop doing this, this Jesus thing? What if, what if I yeah. decide, eh, I'm, eh, I'm, I'm over, I'm over it. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Um, but God's, he's obviously, he's way smarter than I will ever be. Um, because he's entrapped me in, in it. He hasn't entrapped me, but he's gotten me really far down the road. And so I, there's not, he's wrapped you there's in not a, love, there's honey. not a good chance for me to, <laughs> because the way the things that I've, like gone out to do i cannot do on my own and so the only reason i'm even able to do them right now is because of father and paul understood that like what was he going to do in jerusalem he's going to die what was he and he already promised that he would be able to to uh preach to rome Mm -hmm. and so and that was his life's goal was to evangelize the world um he did it believe and and so he he recognized it he's like there's nothing there's nothing here for me and i have no one else to go to and i think that like there's a coming to that point in your life where I can't do, and I've said this before, but there's this point, like, I can't do any of what I'm about to do mm-hmm. without God. Yeah. And so, and once you're far enough down the road there, you can't go back. Like you are mm-hmm. fully sold out. And that's what happens when you're sold out to God. Um, be, like you've yeah. surrendered it all because he, you've allowed him um, to make the choices in your life. So now you are 
fully Mm -hmm. dependent upon him. And that's, that's what I recognized. I was like, Paul is fully dependent. And we'll see that with Moses and, um, and Jesus later on. Don't Um, be giving away our, we'll get get to it eventually. (laughs) Probably about to go to Moses anyways. Um, but, and I, I even go on to Moses. So we know Moses was, um, that's rude. Um, (laughs) God told Moses to, to, set his people free Mm -hmm. um to be god's mouthpiece to the egyptian people um and and moses goes and he 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 does what i mean after some grumbling complaining he goes and does what he's supposed to do and then pharaoh gets upset with him and then he goes back again and there's more the the slavery gets worse and all this all these other things and moses is just he's like what what do i do now (laughs) because he can't go back he's he's stuck because um, he's right there, he's, buddy. His heart has gotten involved with his people, mm-hmm. um, and he's caused them so much heartache. And so he's like, I have to make this better, or you just or, kill me off now. Yeah, they're going to kill me now. Um, mm-hmm. And even later down, in, in, when they're Ill, in the wilderness, he's like, I'm not going unless you're going with us because I can't do it. I can't yeah. leave these people on my own. They, they will die in the wilderness unless you go with us. And so he has that resolve. I, I'm going to sit here until you say move. Mm. Yeah. And that... That's really where we have to be. And I think that's really where I've been. Um, but I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna act like I got it together. Um, since January, this idea of even if I wanted to quit, I can't. Mm. Because I'm so far into it has just been the only thing I could really concentrate on. If we're being honest, because it's just so wore down. And I'm not going to act like I'm not right now. But nevertheless, I'm going to choose God, even when I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my flesh doesn't want to. Sometimes I'm so ready to throw in the towel. But then God reminds me of, of things like what we're talking about what Paul went through and what we're going to read about Moses going through. I've studied Moses a really long time throughout my life. Like he's one of my favorite characters. I didn't really like Paul, so I didn't study him that much. But Moses is someone that I really got into my soul and spirit, but I never read it like I read it when I read it two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read to you what I read then, and then we're going to talk about it. Seth kind of gave away my key points, but that's all right. We'll circle back. So we're going to be reading out of Exodus 5, 22. And y'all, I never read, I never, I've read Exodus a lot, and I've never read this part. I don't know where my eyes went, but they didn't see this. So Moses has just for the first time ever went and talked to Pharaoh and Pharaoh was like, who is your God that I should obey him? Leave from me. And then Pharaoh hardens his own heart and makes the work of the Israelites 10 times harder. He says, you have the same workload, but I'm going to take away the tools that you need to do them. So they were making bricks and stuff. And he literally took away the supplies that they needed to make the bricks and said, you still need to make the same amount of bricks. And so um, that's impossible. Okay. Um, not like Pharaoh was easy on them in the first place, but he really cranked it down because he hardened his own heart, which is just mean, just a mean guy. And so Moses comes out from meeting with Pharaoh and this mob of Israelites ready to choke this boy out. They're like, who are you that you made our work so much harder? And this is what Moses immediately does. He leaves them and goes to be with God. So good job, Moses. And let's look at what he says. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on your people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I have came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to his people, and you have done nothing to deliver them. I'm not going to act like I hadn't been right there with Moses saying, God, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to the people around me? Like, I don't understand. And even in the little, um, words that they put to title the section it says Moses questions 
God plan? I have questioned God's plan so much. And I'm sure we all have. Because we, like Moses, are superhuman. And not superhuman as in we're incredible. I mean, we are very human with all of our humanity and flaws and brokenness. And when you're in the middle of what Moses was in the middle, God said, hey, set my people free. This is how it's going to happen. And it doesn't look the way you interpret what God says. It'll shake you. It'll shake you. And we see it happen to Moses. But he had the right response. He didn't give up. He went to God. And he listened. And he stuck to the plan. And we see him go back. And he... God reassures Moses, and then Moses reassures Israel, and then God recommissions Moses, and then Moses objects a little bit, and then God reassures him again, and then the first plagues start to happen. Mm-hmm. Read it for yourself. It's, it's incredible. And read it not as, oh, this is a Bible story. Read it as this is history. And when you read it with that lens of truth, it will become alive to you. But what Moses couldn't see and what we, when we're stuck in the middle, have a hard time seeing is that just a few chapters on, I think it's in chapter 14, God splits the sea. Moses couldn't see that far ahead. Mm -hmm. And if Moses had just given up right then and there, I don't know what would have happened, but... uh, I don't think they would have been set free quite as quickly. Would have sent someone else eventually. Yeah, God would have sent someone else because God does what God does. But it would happen a little different. Mm -hmm. And that's not being in God's perfect will. Because see, in his perfect will, there is unmerited favor. It's not going to be easy. Favor doesn't mean it's easy. It just means God has given you the grace to do it. Yeah. But if you give up, you forfeit all of that. And, you know, where would Moses, like Seth said, where would Moses have gone? Have gone? He couldn't go back to herd and sheep. Like, once you encounter God leaving, it's an option. Mm-hmm. But really, what are you going to do with that? Like, what kind of, what alternative is that? I know a lot of people in my life who have experienced the glory of God and have chosen not to follow him. And their lives are not pleasant or pleasing. And I'm not saying that my life is the greatest thing in the whole wide world. Because right now, it's it's really pretty crummy and it's pretty difficult. But I have hope in Jesus. Like that song we listened to on the way in. He is the anchor in my storm. So I'll put my faith, my trust, all of me in him because he keeps his promises. And when you're stuck in the middle, you have to remember the promise and you have to focus on Jesus to walk out the plan. And we see Moses doing this and we see Paul doing this Mm -hmm. and we also see Jesus doing this. So tell us a little bit about Jesus, Seth. Or did you have something to say about Moses before we skipped ahead? I did, but I lost him. So I'm sorry. Next time, just... Jump in there. Yeah. Jump um, in there, champ. Well, Jesus was Amazing. is is the Son of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, and our Savior. And yes, I yes. Love Thank him very you, Lord. Dearly. He's my favorite. Sorry, Seth. Are Jesus is my favorite. Uh, uh, I guess that's a good I'm a good runner up to Jesus. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna while you're flipping, I'm gonna give some shout outs. Hey Shaquilla. Hey Rachel. Wow, y'all are popping on the feed. Hi Connie. Oh, hey Pastor. He's watching. He said great show. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, were you done talking about Jesus? I'm not. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I can't find. Okay, so oh, um, I hope you all know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, <laughs> he is a dear friend of ours, and you should really get to know him. And I'm not being funny, so I'm so serious right now. Um, the story of Jesus, he was born of a virgin, Virgin Mary. And the whole Bible is really about him. Like, mm-hmm. even the Old Testament all points to Jesus. And he grew up, and he grew up perfect. He lived a blameless life. And then he 
after doing all these miracles and signs and wonders, he sacrificed his blameless life, his perfect life, so that we could be his friends and so that we could walk out eternity with Father so that we could be connected to God again in such a real powerful way relationally so that we can be sons of the Most High King. And while Jesus was doing it, while he was on earth, he did not have an easy time. He was the son of God, mind you, and the devil came at him like he was his home dog that had just uh, betrayed him or so to speak. I don't know how to put into an analogy what the devil did to Jesus, but he ultimately, along with our sins, put Jesus on a cross, a cross that took away all of our sin and shame, and he shed his blood for us, his perfect blood, to wash over all of our sin and shame. But before that happened, Jesus has a very important conversation with our father, his father, and it's it's very important that we look at this as a man suffering because he loves us, mm. but he's suffering. Yeah. All right, I didn't mean to cry. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we're gonna read it, and I'm gonna try not to. I'm gonna try not to cry, but Jesus is just so amazing. Okay, it's Luke twenty two forty two, and I really. I just love this because it's so encouraging to me because Jesus is perfect. And let's look at what he says to God. So he was withdrawn from them a stone's throw. I love the imagery of the Bible. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So Jesus knew he was about to experience the most painful way to die in all of deaths. Mm -hmm. Like the Romans knew pain so intimately that they capitalized on it and they created the most painful way to die. And that's the way Jesus died. And there's never been a way of death as painful as a Roman cross. Not even those guillotines. Those are fun. (laughs) <laughs> and they no, they were dull most of the time, so it took a couple of chops. Anyway, fun facts. Sorry. So he knew what was about to happen, but more than the physical pain that he was going to experience, he knew that in order to accomplish the saving work that was the cross, he had to be separated from his heavenly father. Mm. And he knew what separation meant. And he knew how hard that would be. And I don't think that we fully grasp all the time what the cross was. It wasn't just this physical torture. Like his spirit was separated from God. And he didn't do anything to deserve that. But nevertheless... He stuck to the plan. Even though he knew the fullness of what it meant, like the full wrath of God Mm -hmm. that flooded the earth, that killed Sodom and Gomorrah, that did all of these impressive things, the full wrath of God for all the world, the whole span of time was placed on Jesus. And he knew what that meant. And he said, I'm going to stick to the plan. The Romans were right. He could have called legions of angels to get him off the cross. But he didn't. And he didn't because he loved us so much. And so I want that kind of love. That I love the person I'm ministering to so much that I'm not going to take the easy way out. I want to love God so much that I'm not going to take the easy way out, that I will be obedient in life and in death. Yeah. I just want that. I want that for us. Not just because obedience brings favor, but because God, God deserves 
our obedience. Mm-hmm. Like he he deserves us sticking to the plan even when it's difficult. Like he doesn't deserve me pondering how I can run away. Like he he is a good father. And yeah, it's difficult being in the middle, in the valley, whatever you want to call it, it's hard. And this life is always going to have its trials. But if you focus on Jesus, you don't seem as stuck. Mm-hmm. Seem as stuck. Because if you stick to the plan, you're going to get out. Like, I'm not worried about, oh, is it going to be okay? I know it's going to be okay because God's going to work it all out. He works it all for good. I mean, Joseph said that in Genesis 50, 20. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. For the saving, oh, to accomplish what has been done. The saving of many lives. Like, that is always God's, that is always how he works he works it for good whatever was intended to harm you he works it for good and not just for you but to accomplish what has already been done the saving of many lives that's what we see happening with paul Mm -hmm. like i cannot count how many people and how many places he ministered to from 23 to 28 like you can't count them we don't know fully and we won't know until glory the impact that Paul had in that, in, I think, probably the hardest time of suffering. Because some of these people were his friends. The Pharisees that he studied with, they completely were against him. I don't know if y'all have ever had a friend against you, but it's not fun. It hurts really, really bad. But when you know what God has said, when you know what God has promised, when you know the plan, you stick to it. Even when it's difficult. Yeah. And that should be encouraging to you guys. It is to me. Is it encouraging to you, Seth? Always. Okay, I'm trying not to cry. Think about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I got really heavy a little bit. Okay. All right. Got a point. Never. Um, <laughs> so this is, it's not off topic, but it, it, this is what the Lord gave me. And this was on, I got this Wednesday morning at prayer. <laughs> um, and it's just one verse and it says, it's John 18, 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he's the prayer that he's praying for his believers, for his disciples, and to his Father. Um, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his, which he and his disciples entered. Um, and it's also the Valley of Kidron. Um, but that's the valley that runs in between the Temple Mount and um, the Mount of Olives. And Kidron means val- or decision. And so he, he walked through the Valley of Decision. And the Lord started to speak to me about how, how every, at every moment of our life, we, we, we are walking through the valley of decision and how everything, it's either we take a right or a left. There's, there's, I mean, there's blurred lines, but, um, we, we have to do this walk with Jesus. And, um, over the past couple of days, I've been really kind of doing some house cleaning on myself and, um, one of the things that I realized that I was missing and the thing that um, I've probably always been missing is, is love and my ability to give out of love. Um, and so I've literally just been letting myself get loved on by the Father for the past five days. Um, but it, it, and it's been fantastic as always, but that you were talking about um, this earlier and this I rem- was my during Moses. Um, because love is our strength and and we do everything in love and that's what jesus jesus did because he recognized that um like he wouldn't have been down here if it wasn't if it wasn't for us because he he saw this conversation right now he saw every intimate conversation we've ever had with him um every every chance that that we've had to come to him and worship him and um talk to him about our lives talk to him about our days talk to him about problems that we're having um, he saw all the times we'd be difficult, st- stiff necked, all the times we would be, um, just a real pain in the butt. And, and he was like, yep, I love, I love Seth enough to, I, to die on the cross. I, like you said, I love each one of us enough to die on the cross in the worst way possible because it's worth it. And, and I, I see what, what will happen because of, because of my death. I see what they will achieve. 
And that was his hope. And that has to be our hope that we, that we love father enough. And we recognize this may suck right now. This may suck um, from here on out. Like our life may be just a, not, not great. Um, but we have to recognize that, that we, we do all this because we love father yeah. and, and this, the, the thing that, we will get to spend eternity praising him and worshiping him and doing whatever he's called us to do in heaven. I don't, I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah, I'm not worried about that right now, but all the things that he has promised to, to us, our, our inheritance. Um, and even when we do turn onto the prodigal son and we run off to the, the foreign land, when we donate. um, yeah. And, and we're disobedient. However, we turn away from father. He is always at the end of the road, just waiting for us to come back and he'll never not be waiting on the end of the road. Yeah. And of course, we grieve his heart and we, we hurt him. Um, but his love is so much greater than that hurt. And yeah. he he's willing to give us of himself because that's what it talk, That's what the Aramaic is for, for that story. He's willing to give of himself. Um, and I, I think that's the key to sticking to the plan is recognizing that God has given you himself he's mm -hmm. given you jesus he he has given you the tools that you need to succeed and so whether you choose to back down now or back down um or not back down like that that is the if you back down there's repentance there's forgiveness and there's always yeah. turning back to father but it, it, just think about what you can achieve and the smile you put on father's face because he was not difficult he was not stubborn yeah. and he and he loved me enough to do what um what i called him to do yeah. and, and it's building that relationship and um this guy i used to listen to he was like god doesn't really care he's like really care what you do he's um and he had put it in this picture of how like a, a t little kid will paint a picture and it'll be Ugly. not 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 a good picture at all <laughs> um and Father will love it enough that he'll hang it up on the fridge for everyone yeah, to look at. Because that's what um, you do, and that's that's what he sees sees mm -hmm. us the same way. He's like, <sighs> yeah, he he did it for me, and so that's I right. could, I can't, and we probably will screw up because you know oh, we yeah. are human. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just that that act of obedience and saying, okay, yes, Father, I'm I am your servant. I surrender. Um, I will be obedient with whatever you tell me to do. And he's going to put that on the fridge because he is proud mm -hmm. and he wants to show that off to everyone that you are obedient. Show it off to all of heaven that yeah. you're obedient. Yeah, he doesn't require our perfection. Mm -hmm. You know, if he if he expected us to be perfect, he'd have made us a little different. But he does require obedience. And obedience is so pleasing to him. Just like Seth said that, he slaps it up there on the fridge. Even when... Even when we misstep in obedience, which doesn't make sense, but the Lord's unpacking that to me. If our heart's intent is to be obedient, even if it doesn't look the way we thought it should or he thought it should or other people thought it should, like he's pleased with our desire to obey him. Mm -hmm. And he works out of the intent of our heart because he sees our heart. Yeah. Um, but like Seth said, don't be stubborn. Psalms 32, 9 says that. It talks about don't be like a mule or a horse that has to be hooked to a bridle and jerked around. I don't know if you've ever ridden a horse, but they put this bit in their mouth and it's so uncomfortable that the horse, the horse follows everywhere you pull that bit. God doesn't want to pull us around like a mule. So don't be stubborn because he's not going to do that. He's not going to pull you around like a mule because he loves you. He's going to wait for you to obey him. Um, some other scriptures that just God highlighted, Isaiah 60, 22, talks about God does it in his time. It actually says in its time. So there's a time for everything. Ecclesiastes tells us there's a season for everything. And then later on in the New Testament, God says he makes everything beautiful in his time. So it's his time, not yours. And so you have to remind yourself of that. And when you get discouraged, just remember that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord that psalms 37 23 and he he delights in his way so he orders your steps you don't have to worry about making a misstep if you're being obedient 
Proverbs 16, 9 puts it this way. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Hmm. So yeah, you can make your plans. But at the end of the day, you are obedient, not to other people's opinions, not to your own opinion. You're obedient to God. Acts tells us we don't surrender or submit. We don't bow to the opinions of man, but we answer to the Lord. That is the only way, the only attitude to have in obedience. Because people are going to tell you how they think you should have done it or how they think you should do it all day long. They're going to they're blue in the face and the cows come home. And you can take advice, seek godly counsel. But at the end of the day, you stand before the Lord and your obedience is to him. And just remember that Esther 4.14 wasn't just talking about Esther. I'm going to read it because it's pertinent to this time and it kind of sort of fits in. Okay. And who knows but that you may have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And I know that that verse has been echoed throughout our country at this time. But God is consistent. And so if he's saying that to the nation, he is saying it to you. And if you're anything like me, which I'm sure you are, because why else would you be listening to me and Seth? God has been telling us our whole entire lives that we were born for such a time as this. I used to ask God why he didn't birth me in like the women's right to vote era where they were like starving themselves and stuff like, you know, some tough stuff. Little did I know how tough it was going to get for me. He birthed me in this time in this place for exactly what is happening he didn't make a mistake and he did it for seth and he did it for every other person listening no matter how old you are no matter what generation you belong to no matter how you feel no matter if you're stuck in the middle for such a time as this god has placed you right where you are now the decision the decision is yours are you going to be obedient or are you going to give up? I hope that you would be encouraged to not give up, even in the valley of decision. Is that how you put it earlier, Seth? Yes. The valley of decision. Hmm. So title this <clears throat> sermonette, whatever you want to title it. Make it personal to you. Make it relevant to you because it is relevant to you. Hmm. Don't let the devil steal what God is trying to say to you because it's coming from us. God wants you to know that he is with you. He is for you. So just like Paul, just like Jeremiah, just like Joshua, be of good courage because yeah. he's with you. And when he's, for you, when he's for you, who can be against you? He's all we will ever need, and he withholds nothing from us. So let's be inspired with courage and hope in Jesus today. Okay, Seth. Any last words, final thoughts, prayers? I mean, this is, we said this with obedience. We said this with promises. We We're going to say it, it for the rest of our um, lives. But the, in prophetic words are wonderful things. And that the only reason why I'm here is because of prophetic words. Um, I thought you liked me. No, never. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but it's it's recognizing that those are direct words i mean if of course if they're from god then they're direct words from god and that's what he needed needed you and wanted you to know in that moment um and that you can always go back to that word and recognize that okay this is what father thinks of me this is what he's calling me to do and that means he's he's we don't have to wait for him to give it to me give it to us he is already it's already in us and he's we just have to use it um, and sometimes that, that looks a little hard and sometimes it is hard because there are some things that are not very easy to use when you have no idea what you're doing. Um, Say that, sir. <laughs> but it's, it, 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 it takes us back to the title, which is just sticking to the plan. Like mm -hmm. you say, all right, father, I know you, I know I have this in me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to play this guitar until I know how to hit a note. Um, yes, and then, sir. and having that attitude with everything in your life that like, all right, Father, you told me to do this, so I know I can do it. And then 
diving at it because, you know, what else is there to do? Right. Um, throw, throw yourself at it. Uh, yep. <laughs> throw yourself at the right things, not the wrong things. Not the wrong things, yeah. Let's, um, let's put that in context, people. Don't take me out of context. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, again, it just when you find yourself at the value decision, recognize that where you are and recognize that um, that there is a right and a wrong path and, and <laughs> using love as your strength and using um, Jesus as your hope and your future um, and recognizing, all right, I'm going to choose the right path because this is where Father wants me to go. Um, and it won't always be easy because he will call you down some hard paths. Like he called Paul to basically get himself killed. Um I mean, obviously wait, it was wait. it was later, sooner than sooner, but um, wait, wait. But it, it you have to. It, it's obedience. That's right. That's there's right. there's not you, nothing makes you feel better than obedience. Yeah, even even when obedience doesn't feel good, it's uncomfortable because God's calling us to uncomfortable obedience. Yeah. Even when it's uncomfortable, there's this peace that floods you because you know, regardless of what anyone else says. You did what God told mm -hmm. you to do. And you're, not, you're not responsible for the results. You're not responsible for anyone else's response. You are responsible for what God told you to do. Mm -hmm. And so we encourage you to be faithful to the Lord and to do the things that he's called you to do. Don't, don't take the easy way out. Paul didn't. Moses didn't. Seth didn't, and we don't want you guys to either because, well, we kind of love y'all. Even if we don't know you, we love you all. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening to yet another hour. It's just incredible that you guys give us this opportunity. Um, I think this is probably our favorite thing to do. I can't speak fully for Seth, but for me, this is this is the only thing in my life right now that I actually want to do. And so I thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to do it. Thank you, Seth, for always being obedient, even when it's difficult. I know sometimes I'm difficult. So I thank you. Shout out to my friend. So until next time, guys, be encouraged. And encouraged means inspired with courage. So be of good courage and do not fear because the Lord is with you. No matter where you go, we love y'all, and we'll see y'all next time. Be blessed and be a blessing. From the